Wow, uh, what an evening, what a weekend. Uh, thank you, thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for the input that you have given us and thank you for the ability for us to tell you what we're trying to do here. But before I dive in, let's give another big round of applause to Rich and Lauren for their inspiring words. <laughs> and to Jess and Will for their music this evening, thank you. Again, thank you for being here. I recognize that you have a lot of time, a lot of things you could do with your time, a lot of competing priorities in your lives and your career, and I know how much it means to us for you to be here today. I'm enormously grateful for that. This is a weekend that we set aside to be with one another, a weekend to remember, to reflect, and to celebrate just how far we've come. But even more so, it's been an opportunity to look ahead to the bright future we are building together for the college. Consider this. How many institutions in America have endured for 200 years? There are very, very few. And yet, in a little more than eight years, Gettysburg College will earn this distinction. Now, it may be that the year 2032 seems distant to us now, but the choices we make here today will have a profound impact on the strength and the vibrancy of our college for years to come. It's what makes opportunities like this so rare and so essential. The opportunity we have to build off the inspired work of our predecessors in the 19th century, the 20th century, and now in the 21st century, and together to take that next step forward from a college endeared by 32,000 alumni strong to a college revered across the nation and around the world. We will achieve this by what we do now for our students and yes, for society during this pivotal chapter in our uh, history. So I invite you to reflect on what the world will look like in 2032. What do you see? In a time of so much upheaval, so much uncertainty, I have never been more certain of who we are as a college and our capacity to make a difference. When I envision of the world in eight years, I see our graduates rising to the challenges and opportunities of their time and changing our world for the better. I see our campus engaging across difference to strengthen democracy and to help unite our nation. I see our alumni pioneering new approaches in science and medicine to advance global health and developing new innovations and in technology to heal our fragile planet. I see Gettysburgians creating art and music that lift our spirits and offer us new perspectives on the world and Gettysburgians launching startups and NGOs that will do well by doing good. I see our students learning to lead with courage and conscience and our devoted faculty forever by their side, teaching them how. And I see us coming together as one Gettysburg community in support of a new generation of doers, like Emily and Drew, Ratul and Lincoln, and so many of the incredible students you had a chance to meet this weekend. I see the salutary influence we, as stewards of this great institution, can have on this world, and it is compelling. I know you're committed to this too. It's why you're here. You love this college, you care about our students, and you want to see them thrive. So the question before us tonight is this. How do we create this bright future? How do we prepare our students to graduate with the skills and the resolve to break through, to meet this defining moment, and to advance Lincoln's unfinished work? And above all, how do we instill in our students the belief that they can. During my presidency, the college has dedicated itself to examining this mo these most fundamental questions. Our answer is clear. It is one grounded in the mission and guided by the core values of Gettysburg College. We are going to rally around our students like never before. We are going to rally around our students because they need us now. Look around. Our students need Lynn Haluba's guidance and Amanda Dolan's encouragement. Our students need Brendan Ripp's network and Quinby Jackson Mott's mentorship. They need Michelle Lynette Hughes' energy and Peter Holleran's creativity. Our students need all of us 
working together to help them launch their careers in this extraordinary time of change and transition. You've heard it over the course of the weekend, our world is changing at a dizzying pace in every sector, across, ev across every industry, including higher education. We are experiencing the effects of a society, an economy that is more globally and technologically interconnected than ever before. As a result, our students are graduating into a world that is vastly different than the one many of us graduated into. A world in which the pace of change is certain to accelerate as artificial intelligence profoundly disrupts the way we live and the way we work. Some of you have heard me say this before, but given all of this, it is predicted that this generation of students will change jobs 17 times during their lives and change industries five times during the course of their lives. Just think about that. Think about what that means for our obligation to prepare them for that world. It starts by living our promise. Today's students deserve an education that is truly lifelong. They need a consequential education. That is what we promise every Gettysburg student, and as you've heard over the course of the weekend, it is now at the heart of our strategic direction. A consequential education enriches the mind, deepens the heart, and strengthens the capacity to act. In my view, there is no greater gift we can give to our students than a life-altering education during their formative years. As students, you all have lived this. For Jamie Fleet, it was developing his passion for politics through his involvement with the Student Senate, the College Democrats, and the local council that led him to a career on Capitol Hill. Today, he serves as staff director for the U.S. Committee on House Administration and senior advisor to Hakeem Jeffries. For Crystal Ebert Parker, it was her involvement in the Center for Public Service, the Black Student Union, and Habitat for Humanity that influenced her path to become the program director for the Jumpstart program at Duke University. For Arielle Destaccio, it was refining her communication skills through her involvement in the Gettys version and the Mercury that pointed towards her role as a communications strategist for the FBI. We could go around the room. A Gettysburg education changes you. And that's because a consequential education is uniquely us, formed by our people, our place, and with your help, our distinctive approach to teaching and learning, all working in unison to develop the whole student, the whole person. As someone who has spent more than 30 years of his life in higher education, I can say with certainty that the experience we offer here at Gettysburg is special, and here's what it looks like in practice for our students. The biggest thing that led me to Gettysburg was actually the marching band. I saw them at a performance in Allentown at the Collegiate Marching Band Festival, and before that I didn't even know that Gettysburg College had a music program or that they had a marching band, and those were two things that I was really looking for. I also really valued the underlying principles behind a liberal arts education, and I wanted somewhere where I wouldn't have to choose between being a scientist and a musician. So many of the programs that I was looking at, you had to choose one or the other, but Gettysburg said, hey, no, you can do both. Being able to focus my creative energy in both chemistry and music has been a very important part of my time at Gettysburg. A lot of times people think of science as one correct answer or one right way to do things. But as I've gotten further into my studies, I found that that's not always the case. A lot of times it's about finding the most elegant way to get from point A to point B. And what that requires is that I be very creative in how I design my experiments or in which reactions I choose to do. And there's a lot of overlap between chemistry and music. For example, a lot of the skills that we think about that chemists have are a lot of the same things that musicians need to do. The attention to detail that I have when I'm doing calculations, it's the same attention to detail that I need on stage when getting all of the pitches correct and having the accurate rhythms. The thing that's probably meant the most to me has been having the opportunity to be a peer learning associate for organic chemistry. It's been really special to be in the classroom and in the PLA sessions with these students, watching them have these aha moments that have really inspired me for what I'm going to do after Gettysburg, uh, pursuing a career as a professor of organic chemistry. I really want to focus on 
building relationships with students in the classroom. Having those relationships with my professors, it's been a very important aspect of my time here at Gettysburg and it's helped me to understand the course material better. I felt more supported and I really believe in the value of those connections because it makes the whole educational experience more positive. If you're ever having a hard day, just talk to our students. That was Bryn Worley. Bryn graduated from Gettysburg College this last May and is pursuing a PhD, as she suggested, in chemistry at UNC Chapel Hill. We are really proud of her and the work that our faculty did with her. In this video, you heard Bryn talking about the knowledge and enduring skills that she gained at Gettysburg, again, because of our dedicated faculty, faculty and how she applied this across disciplines. This is the power of our Gettysburg approach. It's what allows our graduates and students to see connections that others can't see and to solve problems that others can't solve. This isn't anecdotal, by the way. When you look at national alumni data, a remarkable pattern emerges. There's a Georgetown study that measured the 40-year return on investment of 4,500 colleges and universities. Gettysburg College ranks in the top 1% in terms of lifetime ROI. Here's a takeaway. A Gettysburg education changes lives, and its value only increases over time. And you've heard about why that's so over the course of this weekend. We don't prepare our students just for their first job. We prepare them for the entirely, entirety of their career, 10, 20, 40 years into the future, for jobs, as Ashley was saying earlier today, that haven't even been dreamt of yet. We also prepare our students for a world that needs their leadership and engagement on issues that matter so they become the effective leaders and socially responsible citizens that our world needs. And I'm sure you've experienced this firsthand as well. Moving forward, everything our students learn at Gettysburg, inside and outside of the classroom, will reinforce one another. It will help students lead lives of consequence personally and professionally. It will connect back to what employers and graduate programs need the most, those transcendent qualities that are the hardest to teach. Skills by now, you know we are calling the enduring skills. Adaptability, communication, creativity, intercultural fluency, leadership, problem solving, teamwork. You saw this on full display, I think, last night at the roving dinner. Knowledge and enduring skills will be reinforced through our intentional and curated co-curricular experiences through what you also now know we are calling our guided pathways. All of this will be reinforced through the personal advising teams that we are bringing together that make sure that every student gets the benefit of the very best advice. Imagine turning to Suzanne Hickey for guidance as a first year or receiving words of encouragement from Sarah Wendt sitting right there, pressing forward. Four advisors, one student, four advisors partnering with every student to help them get the very most out of their Gettysburg education. That's the kind of personal and timeless education we are determined to deliver. That's the sort of education that will prepare every Gettysburg student, not just to navigate a world marked by change, but to lead people and organizations through that change. At the end of the day, we want our students to know themselves and believe in themselves. That's what endures. On the one hand, I know of very few schools, and Ashley was suggesting this today, so purposefully focused on amplifying the learning outcomes of co-curricular activities and the curation of these enduring skills. And yet, and I hope this is true in your experience as well, what we do, what, what, what we are seeking to do is so distinctively us, making the fullest use of our remarkably supportive community, the impulse of our students to get involved, and the extraordinary opportunities we offer in and out of the classroom. The Gettysburg approach is Gettysburg at its finest, and in my view, the Gettysburg approach is higher education at its finest offering students the tools to shape their lives and readying them for anything and everything that comes next. I've mentioned Ashley Finley a couple of times. You may have heard her comments earlier today. You heard her belief in the impact 
the boldness and the distinctiveness of the Gettysburg approach. With your support, we will build this into a cornerstone of a Gettysburg of education, a set of commitments unmatched by any college anywhere in the country at a time when competition for talent and students and the need to demonstrate tangible career outcomes has never been greater. But most importantly, I believe our Gettysburg approach will help our students to find themselves and to discover what they are personally called to contribute to the world. In short, the Gettysburg approach will ensure that we live to our promise to prepare every student to lead their own consequential life. So I find it altogether fitting tonight that we have an historic announcement. It's an announcement that relates to an extraordinary Gettysburgian, a person who has led a global financial services firm, who has helped shape charitable and cultural organizations such as the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater and Reed Works who has enhanced countless lives through personal engagement, leadership, and philanthropy, who, with her husband, Eric, has become a personal friend, and perhaps most importantly, who has led the kind of consequential life that defines a consequential education. I'm speaking of Daria Lepresti Wallach, class of 1976. Daria, if I may not press my luck too far, may I ask you to please stand? I'm going to make you stand for a few minutes here, Daria. Inspired by our college's bold and ambitious future, Daria has taken an equally bold and ambitious step to support our college and rally around today's students. Tonight, I have the privilege, the honor, to announce that Daria has made a commitment in support of the priorities of our new comprehensive campaign. This is the largest commitment by any living donor in the 191-year college history. It's an endorsement of what her Gettysburg education has meant to her. Based on my conversations with Daria, I can also say with confidence it's an endorsement of the work that we are undertaking together. Tonight, I am humbled, gratified, proud to announce that Daria has made a commitment of $10 million to Gettysburg College. Thank you. Daria, thank you. To say your commitment is extraordinary is itself an extraordinary understatement. Thank you for your belief in us and our vision for the future. I know you have stretched to make this commitment, and we cannot thank you enough for your generosity and faith in this community. I'm also pleased to share tonight that Daria and trustee Bill Heyman, class of 1974 and parent of a class of 2013 graduate of the college, have graciously stepped forward to serve as co-chairs of our comprehensive campaign. The campaign's leadership phase is off to an excellent start with this extraordinary act of philanthropy and Bill's strong leadership. Thank you once again. Let me conclude. Gettysburg College has endured precisely because the education we provide here is enduring. Together, we have an eternal promise to keep, and that is to deliver a consequential education to every student. The shape of that promise delivered to our students since our founding in 1832 has appropriately changed over time in response to changing circumstances for each generation of our graduates. We, too, must evolve we can evolve. As I hope you learned over the course of this weekend, we are evolving. Gettysburg matters to every one of us. Together, we can help shape that brightest future. Dr. Charles Gladfelter once observed, and I quote, 
without a doubt, the most valuable assets which Gettysburg College had in 1900 and 1904 were not its buildings, but a host of devoted trustees, faculty, students, alumni, and friends. Working together, they had it within themselves, to, they had it within their power, excuse me, to determine whether this already venerable institution would exercise even more salutary influence in advancing the cause of liberal education in the 20th century than it had in the 19th. And that is the eternal reality of this campus. It is us, this generation of Gettysburgians who breathe life into the education we provide to our students today, tomorrow, and well into our third century. It is Daria and Bill. It is Lauren, me, and Keith, and Ray Tuex. It is Albert Driver, Jennifer Lehman, and Dave Radin. It is all of us working together to create the future we envision for our college and for our students. On Wednesday, you will receive a note from me. In that note, I will urge you to consider how you will follow Daria's lead and find your own way to choose Gettysburg. What you do matters, and we need your support. My ask of you is this. First, support a guided pathway experience. We are only as strong as the education we provide. Our goal is to ensure that every student, regardless of financial circumstances, will have an opportunity to participate in at least one high impact learning experience through the guided pathways during their four years at Gettysburg College. Your philanthropic support can make this possible. Second, express interest in our alumni mentor program. We're just now in the earliest stages of building this innovative program for our students. We need your help. We need your engagement. When we launched the program in the fall of 2025, we wanted to change lives. You're at the heart of it. By expressing your interest now, you can be at the ground floor helping us to shape this ambitious endeavor. Third, offer a career experience. You can be the bridge between Gettysburg College and the careers our students pursue. You heard Rich just emphasize how much a difference this can make. We can do more. We can make career connections and opportunities a defining part of Gettysburg's identity. Host students for an experiential learning program at your workplace. Provide access to real world learning experiences through internships, externships, and job shadowing. Organize in-person or virtual networking events. Give our students a first-hand glimpse of a potential career path. Be remembered forever as a person who opened the door for a fellow Gettysburg student. Offering a career experience can be truly life-changing, and not just for our students, but for you as well. And finally, go out and galvanize the Gettysburg network. This one is crucial. Go back to your own alumni circles and share what you heard this weekend. Encourage your friends and classmates, classmates to get involved, to get engaged, to be part of our brightest future. To underscore how important this is, for the first time ever, in addition to a dollar goal, we will also have an engagement goal for the comprehensive campaign. We have set an ambitious goal of 75% of all alumni engaging with the college. We can do it, so don't wait. Raise your hand, step forward, and inspire your friends to join you. I'm here today as the 15th president of Gettysburg College. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before and charted the course for this remarkable institution. As we take our next step forward, I'm reminded of the word of our third president, uh, president my predecessor, Milton Valentine, class of 1850. He observed, and I quote, our work lies invitingly before us. Together, we can usher this great college into an inspiring third century. Let us commit together tonight to living our promise and making our vision a reality. Thank you, everyone, for this entire weekend. <laughs>